Hey everybody, welcome back to Spaced Out Radio's Cryptid Tales. My name is Amber Beckrood and today we are going to be talking about something that isn't a creepy monster or anything like that, but a phenomenon that happens in the world and I think is so cool. So for those of you who have been following me on my social media, you know that I have just moved across Canada and I now live on the Atlantic Ocean. Now for me, this is like a dream come true. I'm a huge fan of everything about the beach and ocean life. And yes, maybe it isn't the warmest beach to live in, but I love it here. And it has proven me right every single day, time and time again, every time I go out, I am so happy to be here. Part of what comes with living on the ocean is that feeling of pirate life. Now, for those of you who have that travel bug, who have that sense of needing to be out and exploring and adventuring like I do, you'll know what I mean. I have adored pirates as most kids and adults do for years. I loved them when I was a child. I have seen every single uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movie and I research and look into everything and anything about pirates. Now, so much so that if you think that I'm kidding, if any of you have paid attention to the tattoo on my hand, it does say good luck. And then at the base of my knuckles, there is the year 1718. That year is the year that Blackbeard was killed. So that just goes to show you how in depth and how involved I am in this. One of the greatest pirate legends, pirate folklore is the green flash. Now, traditionally in that realm, the green flash was thought to have been the sign that a soul has returned from the underworld. Basically that somebody has crossed back over into the land of the living and it is only seen when that happens. Over the years and over the ages, that has definitely been something that is contested, but it has also been something that maybe not proven to be the return of a soul to our earthly plane, but it is a real life thing. It's not just the trick of the eye. It's not just people spending too much time out on the ocean and going crazy. Now, this phenomenon is seen at very random times and not everybody sees it. It only lasts for about two seconds and then it's gone. So if you're not paying attention or your camera doesn't catch it, you're out of luck until the next time. Now, these green flashes, like I said, have been a source of mystery forever. Back in the 1800s, Jules Verne categorized this green flash as something that no person or painter could ever replicate. It was a shade of green that was impossible to achieve and there was no explanation for it at that time either. Then it did evolve into Scottish legend that if you did see this green flash, this green appearance around the sun at sunset or sunrise, that you then had the gifted ability from the gods to read other people's thoughts, to have the ability to be more gifted and approach life with deeper meaning. Now, of course, like any great thing, it can't just stay legend in this day and age. And people have gone so far as to actually prove what these green flashes are. What that has boiled down to is there are four different types of green flashes. First, there is an inferior mirage flash. Now, this is considered the last glimpse of the sun as it starts to set and it is always at sea level. So it's always going to happen at sea level and it's just that the surface is warmer than the overlaying air. So if the surface of the water is warmer than the air that is above it, it causes that weird color shift and you get that weird mirage-like feel. Then you have a mock mirage, which a mock mirage is basically a thin strip that appears above the sun for about one to two seconds 
as well. It is also higher than the eye and most likely flat, which is most obvious when the eyes are actually seeing it. So it's just this one flat straight line above the top of the sun. Now this is when the surface area is colder than the air that lies above it. So if the ocean is colder than the air above, you get this one single flat line of a mock mirage. Then you have a subduct flash, which is the larger upper part of the hourglass shaped sun that the sun turns. This green mirage, this green flash lasts for about 15 seconds. So out of all four, this one lasts the longest. And it's that time when there's a huge atmospheric inversion. So there's just too much going on that it's creating a force or a vortex, if you will. And it can occur at any height. So it could be from right at sea level to much higher up in the sky. And it's just that clash of everything coming together. Then finally, you have your green flash or your green ray, which people have talked about saying is like a flash of fire from you know the sea to the sky and it's very noticeable and now this flash or this ray is immediately after sundown or it can happen at sunrise so that is kind of that trick there and it only lasts a few seconds. It is a quick flash and you have to really be paying attention. Now, this means that the air around is usually hazy. So there's probably a high level of humidity and then you get some form of interference in the light rays and you get the green flash. Now, whether this is actually the sign of a soul returning back from the dead, nobody will ever know because we don't know anything about the other side. I know one thing is for sure, I would absolutely love to see a green flash. I have seen a couple of other space phenomenons in my time, but a green flash is not one of them. But you best bet that I will be looking out for it now that I live on the ocean and can actually spend more time paying attention to that kind of thing. I want to hear from you guys. Have you guys heard of anybody seeing the green flash? Have you seen it yourself? What was it like? Did you feel smarter and wiser at the end of it all? Or did you just feel humble? I have a few requests of UFO sightings and things like that. So I'm so excited to get into those. And yeah. let me know what you guys think. If you think that the green flash is actually a symbol, a symbol of somebody returning back to this land. I am really curious to hear what you guys have to think. And of course, I would love any and all suggestions in that comment box. And yeah, thank you guys all so much for tuning in to these episodes every two weeks. My name is Amber Beckrood. Of course, you can check out my social media and all of Spaced Out Radio's social media at these links here. And don't forget to tune in to Spaced Out Radio every single day of the week at 9 p.m. Pacific and listen to what Dave has to offer and tantalize your brains with this week. Now, of course, I would also like to give a massive shout out to Ron Bumblefootthal for the music supplied to Spaced Out Radio for all of our videos and the radio show itself. I love my music and I hope you guys do too. Again, thank you so much and I will see you guys in two weeks.